Hi, my name is Chandra. Welcome to my channel. And this morning, actually, well, late morning, it's 11.30. It's a nice hot summer day, so I thought I'd bake. I'm making a strawberry rhubarb pie with the last of the rhubarb for this season. So let me show you what I've got so far. All right, I moved everything into a bigger bowl because I won't have to struggle so much to not make a mess. All right, to this, I'm going to add, um, this is half a cup of sugar and on top of the sugar is a quarter cup of coconut sugar. That, a quarter cup of tapioca starch, which, oops, is, I had this already just because I have been gluten-free and or wheat-free at different times. And that's one of the things that, and, and, and corn free, and this is a good substitute for cornstarch. So you could also use cornstarch or arrowroot powder. You might just need to look up conversions for how, how much to use. Quarter teaspoon of salt. And let me get my lemon squeezer. Uh, we need, I need one tablespoon of lemon juice, um, usually a half of a lemon about a tablespoon, so like that. I have this left over from my lemon water. Let's see if I can do this. My lemon water this morning. I always have half a lemon in water. It's a nice liver cleanser. Also, just toxin remover. All right, so there's a tablespoon of lemon juice. And I'm gonna stir all this together. It's a hot day, so those strawberries will probably thaw before it really goes in the oven. I think it's okay if they don't. I want the juices from the strawberries in there, and that tapioca starch will thicken the juices. I've actually never made strawberry rhubarb pie before. I'm very excited about it. I made my pie crust yesterday. No. I made my pie crust on Friday because I wanted to ferment it. So I used um, just a reg my regular einkorn pie crust recipe. This bowl is moving. And to that, when I was cutting in the butter, I added about a quarter cup of my starter, uh, my spelt starter, but you could use any kind. And then I let that sit. I formed it into... Um, you know, when you make pie crust, you mix the pie crust, then you divide it in half, one for top and one for bottom, and make a disc. So I did all that, covered it, and let it sit on the counter. And it puffed up very nicely as it fermented. So I'll kind of, and then I put it in the refrigerator and let it, so it's still ferment, continued to ferment. So we'll see, I imagine with pie crust, if you let it go for too long, which it has been in now the fridge for a full day, um, it does continue to break down. So hopefully it is not so broken down that it becomes difficult for me to work with. Okay, I rolled out the pie crust and I did not film it because sometimes I get really angry when I do pie crust. I didn't this time, it worked pretty well. And um, I rolled it out on parchment paper and then turned it over and put it in. And then before I peeled the parchment paper off, I put it in the freezer for a few minutes so that I wouldn't rip it as I was removing the parchment paper. And that worked. And then I filled up the pie crust with that. And it's nice. Oh, it's very mounded. But that's okay. I think it'll shrink quite a bit because those berries are still frozen. And I have the lattice top in the freezer just for a minute to harden up because the butter is really softening because it is a hot day. And I'll take that out and put that on and maybe I'll be able to show you how I do that. Okay, I put these across and I folded back every other one. And now I'm going to lay... These are short because I did make them thicker because I didn't want it to break. All right, I'm going to lay this right across the middle. And then unfold that but fold this one back so fold back the ones that were unfolded and fold down the ones that were
the reason you do an open lattice type crust or just something with cutouts for fruit pie is because it gives off a lot of steam as it cooks and you want that to escape. Oops, that broke. What? Well, it's gonna, sh we hope it's gonna shrink a lot. All right, now the other ones need to be pulled back. So we can lattice it. That might be it for that side. It's falling apart. All right, now on the other side. So this is the one that needs to be folded back. And this one. And that one. Looks pretty good for butter that was very soft. Oh, it'd be nice to have one right there, but that's not gonna happen. We might just lay one on top because that'll be fine. That's not very noticeable at all. Now I gotta do something with the edges here. The butter is probably very soft at this point. Okay. That looks pretty nice. I took the extra strips that I hadn't used and I just laid them around because I didn't have enough of the bottom crust to overlap. I did over here. And then I used this fork around the edge to kind of make it look like all uniform, which I think worked pretty well. So this is very warm at this point. This butter is quite melty. So I'm gonna stick it into the refrigerator. I would put it in the freezer for just a few minutes, but I'm gonna go upstairs and put Nora to sleep and who knows how long that will take. She's pretty tired, maybe not long. But anyway, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator so it doesn't get completely frozen if, it, if, I'm, if I take a while. But I just need to do that butter hardened up again. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm back from putting Nora to sleep. It didn't take that long. Um, I'm getting the oven preheated to 375 and I have a half sheet pan um, with a piece of old parchment paper. This is gonna be garbage after this. That pie is going to leak a lot. There's a lot of juices and it's very full. Um, I am using, I'll link the recipes below, I'm combining two recipes. When I look up a recipe for anything, especially baked stuff, well, anything, I always look up Ina Garten first because everything she makes is delicious. If we want a recipe to be good, we look up Ina Garten. Um, always comes out well. In this case, okay, here we are, it's the next day, and what I was trying to say is that this time I also used uh, a recipe from Smitten Kitchen, which I also, I usually like her recipes too. She's got a, a ton of stuff. Uh, but she also had a strawberry rhubarb pie and it had more of the ingredients that I had on hand. So so I used her recipe, um, I used Ina Garten's recipe for cook time um, and I think that's it really. And the Smitten Kitchen is what I mainly used. I will link both of those and you'll be able to tell what came from what. Um, I do that a lot, you combine different stuff and it usually works out pretty well. Okay, this has firmed up nicely and I made an egg wash by beating an egg with just a splash of water. It's probably about a tablespoon of water. I'm gonna brush this on the crust. The reason you want to chill the pie really well before you put it in the oven is that when the butter hits the hot oven, it will release a lot of steam, 
what you want it to do rather than just like melt away and the steam will create loft and flakiness in the dough. Just took it out. Can you hear that? It's bubbling, sizzling, and it looks gorgeous. And it did shrink down. It's a nice height now. That needs to cool fully so the juices can thicken. And we will have it for dessert tonight. Look at this gorgeous pie. Oh, it was is really good. Um I ended up cooking it for a lot longer than the recipe said. I followed Ina Garten's cooking directions, which I think the temperature wise, uh, that was a good idea because I could cook it for longer without the top getting as burnt. Um, but I did need to cook it for half again as much time for it to really get bubbly all the way around. But there it is, I've already had two pieces today. Hopefully there's some for Joe when he gets home. Thanks for making rhubarb pie with me today. Uh, the last strawberry rhubarb pie of the season. I already can't wait for next year. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.